this building it says air museum on it it's one of the old blimp hangers from world war ii they used to have navy blimps were stationed here in world war ii and these buildings are big enough that they have their own weather inside there used to be two of them this is the only one that's left the other one they were using it to store hay and, and so forth in it and the hay caught fire somehow and burned the building to the ground the buildings were wood and so when that got going there was no stopping it so of the two blimp hangers the one with his air museum on the top of it is the only one that's left well we're in the air museum that we showed you the outside of a few minutes ago and so anyhow i'll kind of scan this a little bit i'll have to count the stars on old glory right over there see if it's the 48 stars 48 star flag because during world war ii there was only 48 states so anyhow, we're going to walk around and see the sights in here, so we'll get back to you in a minute. All right, like I said, we're inside the building, and they've got one of the end doors open. There's actually two doors. One of the one is open, and you can see up here on the ceiling maybe all the woodwork. These buildings are made out of wood and kind of how big it is. They could get, I think they could get two Navy blimps in this in this building. Two or three, I can't remember for sure. Well, I mentioned the other flag not being might might not be a 48 star flag. This one is definitely a 48 star flag, as you can see here. And you can count the six rows of eight stars. This is a Stearman, what they call a biplane, because it's got two two wings on it, and it has a radial engine. You look right up here. It has a radial air cooled radial engine in it. This is a fairly old plane. I'm not sure how many of them were built. And the age of it is not a new plane. Well, here's a little bit about this Stearman plane. Tells how fast it goes and how high it can fly and that sort of thing. And here's another old biplane. It has British markings on the wings, as you can see, kind of right up here. And the plane is actually not a real. It's a real plane. It will fly, but it's a. A replica of the French Newport. They spell that N-I-E-U-P-O-R-T, being them French words you spell it one way and say it another. But anyway, it's not a, it's not actually an antique plane. It's a, a replica of one of them. This board here is a tribute to the WASPs. It's called the Women's Army Service Pilots. They used to ferry planes from the from the factories to the airfields that they were needed to be so if the plane was built at Boeing in Wichita Wichita Kansas and needed to be taken to an air base in California or Texas the women's army service pilots or wasps were the ones that would fly the planes and get them to where they had to go this plane here is an Avenger it's a World War II Navy plane it was called the Avenger and its name came from it was one of the first planes used after Pearl Harbor so it was to avenge the attack at Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941. So the plane was named as the get even plane for that attack. And this right here is the tail hook that was used to grab the arrestor gear on the deck of an aircraft carrier. That's the hook that would grab the cables to stop the plane when they landed on the deck of a plane. That was the difference of the Air Force F-4 Phantom and the Navy F-4 Phantoms. The Air Force planes did not have this hook and the Navy planes also had a huskier, more beefier landing gear on compared to the Air Force planes, but internally the fuel pump from an Air Force plane would fit a, a Navy F-4 Phantom. And this is, another, this is a modern day fighter. It got things kind of crammed in here. I don't think I can get far enough way to get it all in. I have to kind of do a video sweep of things, I guess. This is an F-15. And it too is a Navy plane. Actually, it's an F-14, the Tomcat. This this was the plane that was used in the movie Top Gun with Tom Cruise. And we're looking at the intake of an engine. It's a pretty good size. Pretty good size opening here. You can crawl through that without any problem at all. That's that's the intake to the jet. There would be two of these. There's another one on the other side. And this is the back of the plane. 
where the jets come out. One of them right here. And looking in the back of it. I don't think you can tell it too much on here, but this, these are the turkey feathers that can they can be adjusted. And right up here is the hook that's used to grab the arrestor gear on the aircraft carrier. Well, since they have a ramp, you can walk up here and look inside the plane. This is the this is the pilot's seat right here. Got the canopy, of course, closed, so you get some reflection off the canopy. But this is the pilot's spot right here, and behind the pilot, right back here, is what they call the Rio, the radar intercept officer. And so that was his spot here. And the, the handles that you can see right up here at the top with the red and black ribbing on, those are the ejection handles. You pull those and the canopy pops off. And then there's a, an explosive charge, kind of a small rocket that launches the, the uh, seat and all right out of the plane. And then and so they can parachute to Earth, have to eject if something goes wrong. Looks like they had two commanders flying this one here. Here's Commander Lucky Parent, and here's Commander Ted Cantor. And here's looking at the top of the wings, and the outer part of the wing out here is the part that moved. They could, and when they were flying supersonic, they could pulled that wing back a little bit, made more like a delta type wing out of it. And you can look back and see the two tails. But this is an F-14. Well, the plane in the background is a Navy plane. If I'm remembering right, I think it's called a Crusader. I think it's the, it was the name of it. And on the wings, Right here, these that are sticking down, these, those are where they held the rockets and bombs on in this plane. They were held on the wings. It, the plane, as far as I can remember, did not carry any machine guns or cannon or anything. It, it was strictly a attack, air to air, air to ground, using missiles. Kind of like the F-4 Phantom. The F-4 Phantom did not have a gun. It did everything with missiles. This plane here is a MiG-17 successor to the MiG-15, which was used in Korea in the early 1950s. This is a Russian fighter. As you can see, it has the big red star on it right there. Anyway, this is a Russian MiG-17. This plane here is built by Boeing. It's known as the Guppy. It was basically a cargo plane. And it's kind of outside here. We get a chance to go aboard it, so we'll see you inside. Well, this is inside the guppy. You can get on some idea how big it is in here. It's actually pretty good size. It's big enough here on the floor. You could drive a deuce by truck in here real easy, or like a 10-yard dump truck would fit in here quite easily. And this is the cockpit in the guppy. You can see the controls. And right here is the throttles. And the pilot sits over here on the right, and the XO over here on the left. And right here in front of me would be where the radio man or possibly the navigator would sit. And here's some more, uh, probably the flight engineer navigator. Uh, and then all, this is all the gauges and stuff that he keeps track of while the plane is flying. And then behind the cockpit here, there are two seats. I'm not sure exactly what the two seats would be for other than some other crewmen and they've even got a place to a couple of bunks here so you could if you're running a long distance like from Hawaii to Australia or something like that um, the pilots could ro rotate in and out and could sleep two inside inside here and we got some other people to give you some idea of how big this is compared to a person we'll take a picture of this lady here and and show you so you can compare how, how big the plane is to a person standing in here. I 
This plane here that you see in the distance is known as the Kingfisher. You see it has the pontoon float under it and the pontoons on the wings. That's a, that's known, that plane is known as a Kingfisher. I'm not sure the official designation of it. Oh, this is General Eisenhower. It's a cover of Life magazine. This is General Eisenhower and the date on it. Right down here, April 16th, 1945. Before my time.